Well, coming up on today's show, I'll tell you about how Jaguar's reinvented itself for the next season of Formula E. The electric commercial vehicles at the IAA show feature VW and Ford, and why the cheapest car in Britain could be bringing us the cheapest EV ever made. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, hello and welcome to the Thursday, the 20th of September edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Quick mention for yesterday's two podcasts. I know, two, because if you miss them, I know lots of people kind of listen in batches or catch up, don't listen, necessarily listen every day. Uh, there was a special bonus podcast yesterday, which was my initial first thoughts, first reactions of having seen the Audi e-tron Quattro launch. Um, and if you want to go and listen to that, that is on yesterday's as a free download, as all the podcasts are. We are able to make this show and keep it free thanks to myev.com. It's a brand new website, a new resource, and a marketplace, actually, that's designed to help you buy and sell and learn about electric cars. And so you can go and check that out. Mention Jaguar. We'll start off with them as the first story today. Earlier today on Twitter, I was following the live revealing of the new Jaguar Formula E car, or rather the Jaguar I-Type 3 Gen 2 FE, the new Formula E car. Uh, it is uh, revealed at the London Design Museum. What's interesting about the new cars for the new season, each manufacturer is getting to develop them. So there's a new in-house powertrain developed by Jaguar. Uh, not a lot that they can do within the regulations, but there's about 800 unique parts on the new Formula E cars. However, there is room for development of the motor generator, the transmission, and the all-important cooling of all of those systems, the suspension parts, plus the software of how it all works with the motor control unit. Well, the Jaguar team boss is James Barkley, and he said this, We believe we are the first team to develop our powertrain entirely in-house. This gives us ultimate control in terms of design and development, and hope this will put us at a competitive advantage. The technology is moving at an incredibly fast rate, and the new Generation 2 car will be an important testbed to help develop and drive performance of our future battery electric vehicles. End quote. And they won't be the only Jaguars you see racing on TV next season because the I-Pace E-Trophy series is going to be joining Formula E from December the 15th. Well, from sexy as hell racing cars to vans and trucks. But fleets are so important. You've heard me say this before. It's a it's a point that I've um, in, been inspired by uh, somebody called uh, Tony Sieber who is uh, all about transport as a service the idea that nobody will own the car in the future but you'll want to go somewhere so you grab your mobile phone and hit a couple of buttons and a car self-drives its way to your house and you use it for the hour and then you give it up then i'm not quite on board with a lot of what tony says but what he says one of the things about fleets it's not about how many electric cars you can sell it's how many electric miles you can convert because a, a van or a truck that'll do half a million miles in its lifetime is more valuable uh, than your little old lady who goes to the corner shop uh, to buy her pint of milk once or twice a week and so gets get those converted to electric and the commercial vehicle show is on in Hanover in Germany right now, the 69th IAA commercial show, currently in progress. And I saw a few things today which I wanted to pass on to you. The first is from VW, the VW ID Buzz Cargo. Uh, there's the ABT e-transporter, there's the e-caddy and an e-bike. But let me uh, mention the e-crafter from VW, which I was talking about last month and I think pre-orders are now or coming very soon anyway that is actually a vehicle which is coming to the market albeit a size down from that a slightly larger panel van shape that e-crafter go down a size and you've got this it's a concept but bear with me it's the id buzz cargo all in caps by the way if we are respecting the way vw brand marketers want me to do uh, type it it's a concept van if you've seen the pictures or the Johnny Smith fully charged video uh, with the ID Buzz. You know, it's the retro surfy camper van of the 1960s, reimagined as an electric camper van. And it's built on the MEB platform, which is going to drive VWs. The first one, the Neo. Is it called the Neo? I think so. Uh, the 
golf that's not a golf. Don't call it a golf. It's the size of the golf, but it's not a golf. It's called the Neo, and it's built on that platform. And I got kind of geeky about that platform a couple of days ago from VW. This van, they say, could be on sale in 2021. It is so cutesy sexy, even though it's a commercial vehicle. I still really want one, and I neither surf nor have anything to put in the back of a van. But the styling's knockout because it is that reimagined 60s camper van style VW, which they were famous for, but with batteries. Well, the MEB platform, the mileage on that starts at 330 kilometers, going up to 500 kilometers based on the new test cycle, depending on how big a battery that you spec for it. Plenty for most commercial apl applications. The recommended battery for the van, the ID Buzz Cargo, would be 48 kilowatt hours, but the platform can take up to 111 kilowatt hours of battery. The batteries in the ID range, when they're finally on sale, will be compatible with 150 kilowatt charge speeds. That's the target. They think that by the time these cars go on sale in 2020, that's going to be standard. So they're working to that, uh, which they, the press release says is an 80% charge in 15 minutes. Now, I am neither uh, smart enough, uh, I neither have the talent or the time to work out if that claim is true, but 150 kilowatt charge speed, which VW claim can get to 80% charge in 15, one five minutes. Seems optimistic according to what we know at the moment about the fastest charging cars out there, which would have to be the Teslas. It, it does seem a little bit like something to write in a press release that is not massively true. I do want to believe them, but 80%, is it, do you reckon, is there like a standard that when you say 80% charge, what you mean is you're going from 10 to 80 or five to 80? But then again, it is a concept and therefore vaporware. And therefore, you can really say whatever you want. It's going to be powered by magical monkey dust. There's a 240-volt, 16-amp socket for tools and workmen and tradesmen because when you're sitting on top of a massive battery, why not? And it's got a solar roof for 15 kilometres of additional mileage. The VW press release says this. The ID Buzz Cargo, all in caps, was designed to be just as close to production level. The ID Buzz was developed by... Volkswagen commercial vehicles and Volkswagen passenger cars. Volkswagen passenger cars focused on the van side of it in when it's being used as a people carrier. Volkswagen commercial vehicles on the cargo version. Both models are members of the ID family, a new generation of fully connected EVs delivering the ranges of today's petrol vehicles, a progressive design DNA, an impressive space says this press release. Another unique selling point of the ID family is scalability of batteries. They can be delivered with different battery sizes according to the vehicle purpose of use and budget. This applies to the future ID Buzz Cargo, which like all models in the ID family, is based on the MEB platform. With the MEB, it's possible to go from a range of 330 to 500 kilometers, and it recognizes the new uh, the new van recognizes persons via a digital key it's sent from the van uh, or to the van from a smartphone that you're holding instead of uh, the 22 inch wheels of the concept vehicle that we saw in Detroit 20 inch wheels will be used on the van and with these specifications they say it will meet the requirements of a utility oriented transporter there's some communications marketing speak if ever there was one in this case, with a progressive type of design, they say the solar module on the roof fits into this picture. The photovoltaic system generates so much energy, it's able to extend the range by 15 kilometres. Well, a, a bit of useful information amongst the fluff and the blurb of the press, press release there. That's fascinating. The big solar panel built into the roof adds 15 k's. I mean, it's not, it's not going to break the bank, is it? Let's face it, if you're doing a lot of miles, but it's a nice thing to have. I know that most People would say put PV on your roof and then charge your car and have the energy stored in the battery. Still, most people aren't on board with solar being on cars just because cars are stored in garages and undercover, under carports and things. Well, also revealed, but slightly more commercial in its nature, uh, is the ABT e-transporter. That's an electric version of the legendary VW transporter van, but this time being used as a taxi. And the ABT e-Caddy coming next year, based on the extended Caddy Max car. They make big enough for five people and their luggage if you're using that as a taxi. And finally, I'm seeing so many, many cargo bikes used in London now, and they're just darting everywhere through the traffic. And uh, It's great. I love seeing these cargo bikes because you can get a lot of a lot of goods on the front of them, often two or three wheelers. No surprise that uh, more people are getting on board with them, but I'm surprised VW are making a cargo e-bike on show. Three-wheeler, 
two wheels at the front, 250 watt motor. I think the legal limit in many countries is 15 miles an hour. I'm just starting to look at building my own e-bike, uh, buying a uh, mountain bike or a road bike and then fitting a uh, hub to it and doing all the electrics and stuff as a little project over a couple of weeks time uh, i think i'll start that in maybe at the end of the month and i'll but maybe try and hopefully make some videos of that for you as well in case you're curious <laughs> an idiot like me can do it uh, the e-bike they say is perfect for moving cargo and it's a really clever way of moving goods around tightly packed cities without any emissions well, Ford are also showing off their Transit at the Hanover show. Uh, Ford have been showing off the Transit custom plug-in hybrid. It's got 31 miles of all-electric range and the good old EcoBoost fossil burner to be a range extender. It has a 14, I know, 1.4 kilowatt hour liquid-cooled battery under the floor. The new Transit custom plug-in, they say, is a key component of their global commitment to electrify. The investment is $11 billion dollars uh, to create a portfolio of 40 electrified vehicles globally 16 pure electrics by 2022 uh, so having read you those two stories about those commercial vehicles i can almost predict the comments that i'm going to see on the youtube uh comment section and on my twitter it'll be people who really don't like vw saying vaporware it's never going to happen of course you can make up specs for concept cars because they are just concepts you haven't got to prove anything unlike cars that are actually on sale like things like the Jaguar I-Pace uh, that you can go and order and buy and are being delivered this month they say that the, uh, I can see the criticism now of these, of these German makers saying you keep, you keep putting press releases out make a car and all they've done I see this a lot by the way as a reaction all they've done being a massive car maker all they've done is taken their Golf and put batteries in it and I see that, that comment all the time and I it's kind of you know it's kind of some truth to it uh, they've got tens hundreds of thousands of people uh working for them tens of thousands of incredibly super smart people designing their cars and all they've been allowed to do is take a golf and put some batteries in and that uh, when you put it like that i kind of see their point i'm like yeah you're right actually this is one of the most impressive groups of car builders i'm not talking about the management who you might well be angry with for what happened with dieselgate but like the people who make the cars right it's the smart people there at vw and they could have made a great electric car by now if only there was a will because they would have found a way anyway i can see the i can see the comments now on youtube about the ford transit and a 14 kilowatt hour battery and people being unimpressed by that and that I would agree with. I, I'm enormously frustrated by Ford's progress thus far with electric cars. It does a smack of tokenism. Maybe they're working on some grand plans that I don't know about. That's very true. Why would they make it public if they don't have to? But come on, Ford, you can do better. Well, have you ever heard of the Dacia? Well, the Dacia is a Romanian car maker. And you know what? They actually sell okay here in the UK. They actually sell the cheapest car, cheapest new car, money can buy and it's a little city car and you know what you, you get quite a lot of car for your money now they have plans to go electric but wait for it they know their position in the market therefore they know that they've got to make the cheapest ev that you can buy therefore they've joined up with the renault nissan alliance to keep the costs down i imagine they'll be buying some parts off the shelf here uh, dacia's european chairman jean christophe kugler told auto express the brand is going to evaluate what resources they can get and decisions based on the customers they he says we will remain shockingly affordable how about that that's their chairman using the phrase shockingly affordable he says we won't change our brand territory we have all the electric technology ready and on the shelf and being part of the bigger alliance means that when we need the technology we won't have to negotiate well that's fantastic news and it's nice having earlier this week talked about a new ev from audi with the e-tron being seventy five thousand uh, dollars that a, a brand like dacia going you know what we're gonna make a cheap and cheerful ev as soon as we can do it for the price that we know our customers will pay. It won't be this year, it won't be next year. But I love it when we start talking about EVs at every price point. Well, in New York, rebates are being offered for installing charge points to encourage the installation of electric vehicle charging stations. According to the Charlotte Observer, the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority is offering a $4,000 rebate to any employer or building owner or municipality or non-profit. If you're going to install a Level 2 charger, state officials say the rebates could cover 80% of an installation's cost. The charging stations must be installed, though, in public areas like parking lots, uh, next to workplaces or multi-unit 
housing. I'll put a link to that article in the show notes for you. Well, Germany will likely have to delay its own target of reaching a million EVs on the road by 2022, according to the government and a government-sponsored report. According to this uh, Reuters report today, uh, the report by the German National Platform for Electric Mobility, uh, which was submitted to the Chancellor Angela Merkel on Wednesday, said this, considering the current market dynamics, the one million target will shift to 2022. New registrations of EVs more than doubled in Germany last year, the fastest growth in the world. There are 131 such vehicles registered by the end of 2017, according to that report. I'll put a link to that Reuters article in the show notes for you. Let's go to Korea, and shares of LG Chem and Samsung SDI have been going up as the brokerage houses issue positive outlooks, all thanks to, you guessed it, electric car batteries. LG Chem and Samsung operate EV battery plants in Korea and China and other countries. Meanwhile, an official from LG Chem said the firm's continuing to nurture its EV battery business, and they say this, we are seeking to achieve 8 trillion won in sales in the battery unit alone when the EV market is expanded further with the release of the third generation EVs come 2020. End quote. A link to that article, as the, all of them in the show notes. My take on that would be, you got to remember, you and I, you know, we talk about the Audi being launched yesterday. I get super excited about, uh, we're currently trying to find my wife a, a, a used EV. We think it's going to be the Zoe. We think she likes them. And we get caught up with the day-to-day, right? But these companies, like battery supply companies, work on such a macro level that that we can't think of. So when they talk about 2020, that's that's five minutes away for them. So when they say that they know that they're going to be shifting a ton of batteries in 2020, you and I think that's a year and a half away for them. It's a blink of an eye. And that is a really good indication of what will be on the market. Just wish I could click my fingers and have those cars on sale now. Finally, we'll mention Skoda. Oh, by the way, when I when I did a Skoda story before, and I I pronounced it like that because of the squiggle. I know the squiggle has a proper name. I, I could be bothered. I'll go on and look at what the squiggle is called above the S of Skoda. Uh, I had somebody go, you're saying it wrong. You're saying Skoda. Uh, yeah, so I'm just being respectful to the Czechs, how they would say that word. Skoda Auto intends to invest over 2 billion euros in the next two years to develop their EVs, according to the Prague Daily Monitor. I do find these stories from places, don't I? Um, It's expected to showcase its new EV car, the City Go, next year. Uh, The car is going to be available uh, available to pre-order early 2019 and a 300 kilometre range. Also going to have a new concept car for us to look at very soon called the Vision E, which will be on the market from 2020. And they're targeting a range of 600 kilometres on that one, of course or being part of VW, there's plenty of resources for them to call upon at Skoda. There you go, I said it again. Right, thank you so much for all of your comments coming in on the um, YouTube comments, the emails, which is hello at evnewsdaily.com. I've got a load of emails to go through for this weekend on our question of the week, which is set by myev.com. And they've asked me to ask you this question. How was your EV buying experience? Did you go to a dealer? Did you haggle on price? Did you get a lease? Did you buy used or new? What are your successes and failure stories? Tell me your EV buying experience. Thank you very much to the 82 patrons of this podcast. Yes, there's one more overnight. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Tomorrow on the podcast, we'll go through all the names of the latest patrons, as we like to do, uh, to say thank you very much to those. Uh, By no means do you have to go and look at patreon.com slash evnewsdaily utterly optional Uh, there's 240 episodes of this show for you to gorge upon for free if you want to on all the usual places you get podcasts and you can hang out on the socials with me by searching evnewsdaily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow